We need a small, energy-efficient light to use now that we are off-grid, and I think that the Spider Farmer SF-1000 Evo may just work out. Welcome to the Hippie Geeks, let's dig into this grow light unboxing and par level test. With our move off the grid, energy efficiency has become something that guides a lot of our purchases these days. When Spider Farmer released their newest lights using the Samsung LM301H LEDs, I knew that we were going to be interested in checking this light out. As always, their packaging is fantastic, and it protected the light as it traveled all over the place since UPS decided to lose it for a little while, but it finally arrived for us to check it out, and I am glad that it did. Inside the box you will find the light itself, the instruction booklet, and a baggie of hanging hardware. Looking closer at the light, on the front of the board you can see that they have used the same spaced out LED pattern that we have seen on most of the board style lights that have come out recently. This will help to spread out the light levels across the canopy and helps to avoid a hot spot right under the center of the light. It does work out pretty well, which we can see later when we look at the light levels in a 27 inch by 27 inch Spider Farmer tent. On the backside of the board, you can see the driver in the center of it with the controls in front of that. This controller will allow you to chain the light together with others or run it on its own, and that is set with the button on the left of the controller. If you push it in, the onboard dimmer switch will take control, while if it is clicked out, then the light will come on and only dim when it is controlled by another light. With all of that said, let's take a look at the light levels of this light in the tent that it works best with, the Spider Farmer 27 inch by 27 inch grow tent. At a 12 inch height, the PAR reading in the center is 691, falling off to between 195 and 280 PAR at the far corners. I do the best I can to hang the light level in the tent, but sometimes it is a little off kilter and I am not able to notice it until I have pulled all of the PAR level readings. This light will pull 103 watts from the wall at full power and it goes down from there as you dim the dial. At 80 it pulled 82 watts from the wall, at 60 it was pulling 63 watts, at 40 it went down to 41 watts, at 20 it was pulling 23 watts, and finally at minimum it pulled 11 watts from the wall. Moving up to an 18 inch height, the center reading is now at 396 par, and the light levels at this height are still very decent, and they are also pretty even looking across the canopy. We also took PAR readings with the light dimmed and averaged what the results were, which gives you the PAR X readings on the left. All of the readings shown on the screen are at full power, and to get the light levels at different dim settings, just multiply the shown PAR value by that number. For example, the center reading at 18 inches is 396 PAR, but if we have the light set to 60, we then multiply it by 0.61 and get a result of 242, which should get you pretty close with all of the values shown. At a 24 inch height, the center level is down to 289 par, again with a good spread from there out. We are still using the Apogee SQ420 Smart Quantum Sensor to take all of these measurements, and it has been working great for us for the last couple of years. It is just the sensor itself that plugs into a PC to get the readings, so it is a bit more affordable than their standalone units. The more expensive standalone units are more expensive, but do not need to be plugged into a computer to get a reading. It just depends on what you are looking for. We will go ahead and leave Amazon Associates link to them in the description down below, if that is something you are interested in checking out. Moving up to 30 inches, and the center reading is now at 265 par, and for most things that I would be growing under this light, I would have it somewhere between 24 and 30 inches above the canopy. This is going to give you the best overall coverage with the most even light levels across the entire space. Most importantly though, it is not going to lose the intensity at the center of the space, like you will see when the light gets up to the 36 inch and 48 inch heights that we will look at in a minute. If you want to have the lower light levels, you would be better off just having it at one of the lower heights and then turning the dial down a bit. The best thing about these heights is that you still have plenty of space underneath the light to work, and the heat from the light won't fry any sensitive plants that you may have in the tent. Getting up to 36 inches, the center level is down to 226 par, though the outer edges really haven't dropped off that much due to the reflective walls bouncing all the light around. 
This is really higher than you should be hanging this light if you are using it in a tent this size. And to be honest, it is pretty amazing that we are even able to get this much coverage with the light hung this far from the plants. What you should really be looking for with any light in a tent is the sweet spot that gets you the coverage you are looking for as evenly as possible with the lowest amount of electricity required. As I mentioned before, with this light in this tent, it is going to be somewhere for me in the 24 to 30 inch range, depending on how much light is needed around the edges of the tent. Finally, I hung the light at 48 inches with the center reading at 201 par, and I am only really including these measurements for their completeness so that they can be compared to some of the other lights that we have measured in the past. A 100 watt light in this tent will definitely get you started and you will see some very decent results with a small grow. However, if you are looking to really push growth even in a tent this size, you will probably want to check out something like the SF2000 Pro that will pull 200 watts from the wall, or the G3000 that pulls 300 watts, which is about the largest light that Spider Farmer has that will fit inside this tent. I'm excited to give this a go in a future video, and for the amount of money this costs, you get a lot of light output in a small package. You know that I love squeezing the biggest light that I can inside of a tent, but as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am very interested in efficiency now that we are off grid. One thing that I want to try here soon is to set this light, the SF2000 Pro, and the G3000 to all draw 100 watts from the wall, and then repeat these measurements to see what the results are. Obviously, those other two lights are more expensive than this one, but for the folks that are looking to maximize efficiency and get as much light as possible for 100 watts of power, it could be interesting. If that is something you would like to watch, let us know in the comments down below. A big thank you to Spider Farmer for sending this light over for us to take a look at. If you would like to try this light out for yourself, I will leave a link to it on their website in the description down below. Make sure to use code GEEKS at checkout to get an 8% discount on your entire order.